So Cash, we're going to talk about something that uh, you played a pretty important role in today. Um, we're going to look at Perkins Coy lawyer Michael Sussman's, the indictment against him by uh, uh, Special Counsel Durham. This is something a lot of people are talking about. It's a 27-page indictment for something that might typically take two to five pages. This is what I'm hearing from a lot of people. But briefly tell me, what is this? So basically, uh, we'll get into the details, but a thousand and one count, um, being a former federal public defender and federal prosecutor dealt with these cases a lot, is basically saying you came in and lied to law enforcement, to cops, to the FBI. And that's what they're saying Michael Sussman did. He, they're alleging he went in to the FBI and lied to them. Those indictments tend to be two to five pages maximum. I've done them myself. I've defended them myself. And um, so a lot of folks are curious as to why you would lay out what we call a 27-page speaking indictment. And there are a number of reasons for doing it that way. I can only speculate since I'm not John Durham. So why don't you break down what is in this indictment? Michael Sussman is one of the top two lawyers for the Hillary Clinton campaign when she was running for president in 2016 and the DNC. His law firm, Perkins Coie, had himself, Sussman, and his partner, Mark Elias, be the top two law firms in the entire country for the whole of the Hillary Clinton campaign for president and the Democratic National Committee. So a large role played by this lawyer because they were paid tens of millions of dollars to obtain this role and execute everything from election law to campaign finance to any criminal allegations that might come up to state law as to how voting is supposed to be done in Alabama versus New York versus California campaign ads. Um, the gamut runs pretty far and wide, which is why their, their retainer is so high. But they're the two premier lawyers for the DNC and Hillary Clinton campaign. I mean, and so, you know, this is a bigger role than, say, the, the first indictment that John Durham made, which was uh, the indictment of Kevin Kleinsmith. So people forget, this isn't John Durham's first indictment, it's his second. And he, John Durham charged Kleinsmith with doctoring a document, an email, to the federal judge and federal court that was uh, seen reviewing the FISA application search warrant. So that was a pretty big deal that someone who worked at the FBI was charged with lying basically to a federal court because he changed what was in an actual email and then submitted that email to the court knowingly doing that. And that first individual, Kleinsmith, pled guilty. So he's a convicted federal criminal. And that was the first indictment from some months ago. This is the second one. Now we're moving on to the private sector, uh, the lawyers, the lawyer for the Hillary Clinton campaign. And it's very interesting um, timing and a read. So you have the top Hillary Clinton lawyer, um, or one, one of the two top mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton lawyers, um, allegedly going out and lying to the FBI. What are they lying about? In the indictment, they are alleging, John Durham is alleging, that basically Michael Sussman, on behalf of the DNC and Hillary Clinton campaign, went into the FBI and met with the general counsel. Let's just hit pause for a real quick second. The FBI has 40-some thousand employees, maybe. Um, the general counsel is the number one lawyer at the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Every other lawyer works for him. This individual, Sussman, was able to, based on his relationships with this lawyer and his service um, at DOJ before he went to Perkins Coie, he was able to get a meeting and walk into the Federal Bureau of Investigation's headquarters and sit down with the general counsel of the FBI, which is a big deal in and of itself. But he, according to the indictment, Sussman went into this office to see Baker and provide this information that they're talking about in the indictment, this stuff that we'll get into about Alpha Bank. And he wrote a white paper. Sussman had his team write a white paper that was allegedly paid for by the Clinton campaign. And he presented it to James Baker of the FBI and said, I, I'm just being a good Samaritan. I need you guys to review this. And thanks for meeting with me. What the indictment alleges is a criminal conduct is not the handoff of that information. It's that Sussman, according to the indictment, lied about who his client was, who he was doing on behalf of, who paid him to collect that information and submit it to the FBI, which is a lie if you're lying to the FBI about it. He never revealed to Baker, in the, according to the indictment, that his client was the Hillary Clinton campaign. In fact, according to the indictment, uh, Sussman actually goes out of his way to say he's not there on behalf of anyone. 
he's just stumbled upon this information and I'm presenting it to you, James Baker at the FBI. And of course, the information, the, the, what, what Sussman was alleging was, of course, incredible, could have been incredibly significant if it were true. Yes, if it were true. What Sussman's alleging is that, to get into a little bit of the weeds on, on the whole Russiagate um, scandal from 2016 onwards is, and you have to remember the timing of this. This was before the presidential election in 2016, in September-ish, October-ish of 2016. He goes to the FBI and says, I have information that Trump, the, the other candidate, not his candidate, but the opposing candidate for president, um, his building and his enterprise have been permeated by a Russian bank and a Russian internet server that's allowing them to conspire with the Russian government or people in Russia to steal the election, was the allegation. Pretty significant and pretty damning if it were true. The only problem is, per the indictment and per my own investigation when I ran Russiagate for Chairman Nunes on House Intel, is we knew at the time none of that information was true. And in fact, the FBI and this indictment comes out and flat out says that the people who did the research for Michael Sussman said themselves they didn't believe that the connection between the Alpha Bank server and the Trump campaign even existed. And it would be a stretch to even put it down on paper. That's all in the indictment. Um, so it's, uh, if it were true, it'd be pretty damning. But um, I have a little bit of a personal role in this because of my 2016 job back on the House Intel Committee. Right. Well, you, you actually wrote the deposition that forms a significant part of this indictment. When we were doing, when we were charged by the speaker at the time in 2016 to invest what they called the Russian active measures against the U.S. election, Part of our job under Chairman Nunes was to call in 60-some witnesses and swear them in under oath and depose them, question them, interrogate them. And we deposed principals, attorney generals, FBI directors, deputies, um, private individuals, Clinton campaign officers. And one of the people we interviewed and deposed was Michael Sussman. And I actually took that deposition. And that deposition of Michael Sussman's sworn testimony from 2016 is cited in John Durham's indictment from just the other week. And what it says was, it takes part of the questioning and it says, were you, Michael Sussman, working on behalf of anybody uh, in regards to this Alpha Bank information? And he, in the deposition that I took, said, yes, it was on behalf of a client. And he repeated it and confirmed it. The deposition is in the indictment and speaks for itself. But he wouldn't tell me back then in 2016 who the client was, even though we knew. They claimed attorney-client privilege and that they wouldn't let us get into who the campaign uh, or who the figure was. But we had proven it back then, which is why we took that deposition with such rigor on those line of questions. Well, and it's, it's very interesting because, uh, well, let's, let's actually sketch this out, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so Sussman is the, yeah. top, the top of Perkins Coie. Mm-hmm. And then Perkins Coie is hired by, well, you, why don't you tell me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Perkins Coie, this huge international behemoth law firm, very well respected, is hired by the Clinton campaign and the DNC to be their lawyers for the presidential election cycle of 2016. Big job, right? Obviously, you're representing the Democratic nominee for president and the entire Democratic National Committee. So Elias and Sussman are the two guys overseeing this entire architecture of legal representation. And those guys get paid, those guys, Perkins Coie, get paid tens of millions of dollars from the Clinton campaign and the DNC. What do Sussman and Elias do? They take that money and go out and hire Fusion GPS, which I'm sure many of our viewers are familiar with, an internet research firm. And I believe they're the ones cited in the indictment is Fusion GPS and their CEO, Glenn Simpson. They pay Glenn Simpson and Fusion GPS millions of dollars to conduct research against President Trump's campaign, including all the Russia stuff. Then Fusion GPS hires Christopher Steele, who also I'm sure our viewers are now familiar with in the Steele dossier. So the money, just to simplify, goes from the Hillary Clinton campaign to the Hillary Clinton campaign's lawyers to the people doing the internet research for him, Fusion GPS and Steele. So they are paying, they, the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign are paying for this research you mean opposition research? Yes, opposition research. So they 
the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign through Perkins Coie, Fusion GPS, and Steele are paying millions of dollars to get opposition research against President, or then at the time, candidate Trump and his entire campaign. Bottom line, they're spending millions of dollars on that. Now, in and of itself, I'll tell you that there's nothing wrong with going to get opposition research against your opponent. That's what political cycles do all the time. But this is problematic for reasons I think we're going to get into. At the same time, as they're kind of running the whole legal operation and everything you just mentioned, Sussman goes to someone he knows well at the top of the FBI legal team, uh, Baker, and mm -hmm. he shows him this connection, this alleged connection, Alpha Bank, Trump campaign or Trump organization. Yeah. And at the same time, from what we know actually from this uh, uh, UK legal case mm -hmm. where um, uh, Christopher Steele was actually on the stand. Mm -hmm. um, he, we also know that it was Sussman who introduced this uh, Alpha Bank Trump connection into the Steele dossier in the first right. place, which is, you know, again, fascinating. You're talking about another track of this entire operation that's sort of outlined in Durham's indictment. Not only did Sussman, on behalf of the Clinton campaign per the indictment, take this information to the FBI, He's also taking the information and seeding it into areas of the media. So that's the other problematic portion of the allegations in the indictment, because this information that was false per the indictment, and that from my belief, from my investigation of Russiagate, we knew then that back then, and now it's coming out that it is so. He's not only seeding it to a law enforcement agency, which we'll get to the details of that in a second as to what they did with it, but the media, because they want the media to start running these stories before the election. And that's exactly what happened. So he gives it to Christopher Steele, and Steele starts giving it through Fusion GPS and others to people in the media. And Sussman himself allegedly meets with people in the media to start planting these stories. And what happens? Right before the election, there's a story that breaks nationally that says, looks like President Trump is somehow connected with the Russian government through these Alpha Bank servers. And Hillary Clinton, the Democratic candidate, even tweets it and, say, and pretends like she didn't know anything about it. Look at President Trump. He's connected with Russians. Don't vote for him. And that was, uh, that's pretty damning information to put out a week or two right before an election. 